For people looking for a melee magic, a knight blade, I think I'm probably one of the very few remaining ones who have played melee magic and knight blade over the past, I'd say probably two years. Uh, mostly because most people didn't play knight blade. And in, especially in the current meta, cloak, it, people always had issues with the cloak. I particularly liked and wanted to bring back melee, uh, melee magic and knight blade. I played my magic and knight blade previously, both with cloak and without cloak. The build, of course, that we'll be looking at today. This build is a little bit different from what this is what my, my battleground build. But the build that we're going to be talking about is going to be for for no CP, for excuse me, for Cyrodo. So it's still going to be um, a dual wield and destro build. So we'll kind of utilize your destro build to kind of soften up your target, get, get all your buffs rolling, get your debuffs rolling. And then you're basically going to go in for the kill on your dual wield bar. And of course, dual wield typically you're going to be running dual wield because it gives you access to a little bit of extra spell damage from the very last passive. This is for each weapon, um, you're going to have extra spell damage equal to 142 per sword. So we're going to jump right into the build. This build is going to be with CP. We're going to talk about everything and basically the theory crafting behind the build. So for magic, for melee magic and night blade. There's been a lot of changes. One of the biggest changes, of course, was always related to uh, Cripple. Uh, I had switched off of Cripple primarily and utilizing Debilitate on this build for the region. But one of the best things previously about Cripple was that it had uh, the extra mobility attached to it. It reduced your opponents by 30% and at the same time gave you extra mobility. Unfortunately, a while back that had, had been removed and I'm playing this somewhat pre um, to another build that I had that was very reliant on mobility, uh, which typically most Magicka builds don't have. But for melee Magicka Nightblade, you may want. All right. So looking at this particular build, my Magicka Nightblade is a Nord. I went Nord um, way back when everybody was playing Frost Wardens, and that was back when um, Warden uh, when uh, so you wouldn't get rooted, right? So the uh, Back then, looking at the racials, New Nord previously had more resistance. It was, I think it was 5%. Then they nerfed it and turned it into regular resist. Then they nerfed it again. And I have not changed my Nightblade then. So, uh, Stalwart, of course, for the extra stamina, for CC breaking, roll dodging, which this build will have access to. And, of course, excuse me for the extra ult gem. Um, previously, you had access to immunity to the chilled status effect. I'm not sure if they still are immune. Doesn't look like they are, but that was previously because um, everybody was playing a Frost Warden and the chill status effect, and everybody was running around with um, was it Wall of Elements, so it rooted you. So that's why I went Nord for the extra stability for uh, not having to rely. I think this was before Channel Acceleration came into play, but in any event, jumping back into the build, and that's basically how I kept mine. I have not cha race changed race race changed mine. So again, going. Um, with this deed, this deed is going to give you access to a little bit of mobility as well as health recovery. You can see our health recovery here, all points going into Magicka. As like I said, mine is a Nord. Now, I try to make this build as well rounded as possible for both burst as well as recovery. You can see our resistances right here. They're bringing back some old abilities, some new abilities. So I typically like at least one Lord Warden, and that's basically going to be for the extra armor. Magic of Nightblade is fairly squishy, especially if you're not relying on, for example, um, heals as well as damage heals. And you don't want it to be overly, overly reliant on Cloak for whatever reason. If someone uses a pot or if you have multiple people using AoEs, you don't want to be that squishy that you're completely reliant on Cloak. Sometimes Cloak fails. So that's why I, I, I do recommend at least one piece that is going to provide you with the additional armor bonus. Now, we are running quite a bit of well fitted. We're playing this kind of like the mix of a melee, of a melee night blade, a stand blade with access to, of course, cheap, uh, cheap sprint as well as cheap roll dodge. And that's because we're going to be utilizing roll dodge cloak very much like how a stamina night blade does. One piece Kina um, with Magicka on it and well fitted. Uh, and of course, and that's for the extra spell damage. Now the main piece on the front is going to be in a axiom and that's typically going to be um, for the burst. Almost of, most of your abilities on Nightblade are going to be uh, related to your class. And so it benefits, especially for the extra magicka, the extra stamina. And of course, it's a very uh, glass cannony sort of play. This is a, a too heavy five light build for the penetration. 
And of course, on two pieces, we're going reinforced, <clears throat> which is for the extra resistance, as well as the uh, tri stat, and that's just basically to get us to get our HP into a comfortable area. 26, almost 27k. A lot of people have a lot of HP nowadays, um, and so I could kind of whittle this down for a little bit of extra magicka. And you can see this is basically what our stats are looking like in CP. Now, like I said, we're going to be going with well fitted and then two, two reinforced. And then I have, I believe one of them might be actually, yeah, we went yeah, five well fitted with two reinforced because even with cloak, cloak is going to help you um, reduce a lot of your damage over time. And of course, um, having access to more roll dodges is going to help you avoid a lot of the single target damage that you're typically going to eat most of the time anyways moving forward so my second set which benefits met with benefits nightblade passives because they have a passive that gives them uh, an increase to their all of their recoveries which is why i went with uh, willows i had previously utilized willows before on another cloak blade and i'm bringing it back for this particular build and I, pray, I played my Magic of Nightblade um, both with Cloak and without Cloak, and it worked out just fine. Really enjoy playing uh, Melee Magic of Nightblade. Dual wield, of course, classic Melee Magic of Nightblade. You're typically going to run at least dual wield on one set. The reason I do a little bit of a history on Magic of Nightblade, for a lot of people who had complained previously in the past about um, wings, right? People, And this was back with, with Reflect Wings. So most Magic of Nightblades always utilized a dual wield bar and either a resto or a destro on their back bar and that was because typically in most tournaments you eventually come across a dk with wings and so utilizing um having access to dual wield on your front bar gave you a little bit of a weave and of course you utilize a concealed into a merciless proc when the wings were down and that's basically how i played it ever since um if you remember old school back in the days blobs used to play it very similarly so most people who played back then during old school wings, this is typically how you played, where you had ranged abilities on your back bar, but on your front bar were typically your your pseudo melee abilities on the on the front bar, which is why you ran things like Soul Harvest, uh, Merciless, as well as Concealed. So on the front bar, we are running Shadowy Disguise. On this build, I went with two health recoveries, and that was because, as you can see, there really aren't a lot of healing item healing abilities on the bar so that's why we're having a little bit more of hp recovery this is just your hp recovery with a pot up with a tripod so on your front bar you can pretty much go with whatever feels comfortable for you if you want to use poisons or if you wanted to use two different glyphs when you heavy attack with both glyphs uh with both swords and when they hit at the same time both of them will proc back bar um, is sharpened and i went with the magic for the health return again because this build doesn't have too much in the way of healing. So that's why I went with the, the health glyph on the back bar. So whenever I need a little bit of healing and I'm about to re-engage, I hit the light attack, the glyph will go off. I have a little bit of HP return, which is why I swallow soul traditionally on the back bar. Uh, degen for the buff and basically race against time, which is going to give you the mobility, minor force, remove roots. But of course, you can always roll dodge because we have a lot of reduction to roll dodge. We're bringing back Mirage for the Minor Resolve. Minor Resolve is very strong. As you can see, our resistance is right here. Our Magicka Resist, almost 30k Magicka Resist. Uh, but most importantly, because there's a lot of Wardens and basically you're running around with Subterranean, Subterranean and Dawnbreaker and a lot of people get cl clapped, spin away. So this reduces that damage by 20% on top of the fact having an additional almost 3,000 physical and spell resistance. That's basically uh, right. So we're running two health recoveries with one spell glyph on the front bar, and you can see we're almost 42, and that's not in that's not um, in cloak. I think cloak does cloak still actually give you? I forget. I forget. I have to look at the passive. I, I, maybe that maybe they changed it. I think it just gives the pen now instead of giving you extra uh, when you cloak. So 4200, and this is without a glyph. I'm not using. A glyph on the back bar right we're just using the hp glyph for the hp recovery so this is just with degen so we're sitting almost 4200 with degen which is more than enough because a lot of your burst is going to come from most of your abilities and not necessarily your spell damage so the spell damage is there basically for your spammable you can see almost 9800 on concealed spammable you're going to have extra mobility from your front bar so when you go into cloak you're going to have an additional 25 percent mobility on top of having um, 
race against time so that's going to give you an additional 30 percent movement speed and then on top of that we have speed which is going to give you a little bit more mobility as well for this particular build of course i do recommend winning clockwork for the health region as well as the magic of recovery now talking about uh, front bar obviously concealed is going to be your chief stun it does no longer requires you to be um, in cloak it just requires you to be either from the side or behind your opponent which you typically will be able to do with shadowy disguise and that's primarily to take a, take advantage of the master assassin passive which is basically going to give you additional spell pin so you're going to get spell pin when you're from flanking an individual you're going to have spell pin additionally from piercing mark you're going to have spell pin from running light armor and then on the front bar we are running uh, a nern hone for the extra damage as well as sharpened for the extra penetration penetration is going to be king for this particular build which is also why we're running a sharpened on the back bar because the healing from swallow soul is going to be based on the damage and penetration is going to be give you more damage um, than running um, like a nern hone on the back bar and since the healing is based off of damage you want to try to maximize the amount of damage so all in all you're going to be sitting well over 10,000 in terms of uh, spell pen so you're going to get um, 700 and that's not including the additional five and not including the additional six from pierce mark and not including the additional three thousand when you're behind an opponent All right so that's an additional um six nine and change uh, six and nine and change so you're going to sit around 15 maybe 16k spell pen on this particular build All right uh what else we're utilizing uh, right, you can see the merciless proc. You can see the damage on the merciless is 20k, which is also going to heal you for a percentage of the damage. Shadowy cloak, the guaranteed stun coming out of crit, coming uh, the guaranteed crit coming out of uh, coming out of stealth. Cripple primarily there for the root. So you're trying to whittle down, especially if you're fighting like other magicka builds or or other builds in generally speaking. This is just basically to help whittle down the stamp pool and also to give you a little bit of a breather if for example you're fighting like a magic and dk or if you're fighting like another stamina build it forces them to roll dodge which then allows you to roll dodge and then go right into cloak giving you uh, more mobility because you're going to have access to race against time you're going to have more movement speed when you're sitting in cloak so this is basically why i chose this morph because you don't need the recovery from uh, from the other morph 2200 should be more than enough and you can see the stamina recovery right here is 1400 and that this is just basically with a pot you've got inner light for the extra crit and for the extra magica obviously soul harvest for the burst as you can see the tooltip right there uh, like i said before swallow soul primarily for the healing over time so you're gonna sit around i think with this particular build you're probably gonna sit around 5k recovery comfortably i can say you're gonna sit around 5k health recovery so for example if you eat a little bit of damage you roll dodge immediately go right into the cloak by the time you come out of cloak you're typically going to just naturally recover around between uh i would comfortably say maybe 5k right five or six six k i could comfortably say so about every two or three every three or four seconds you're basically re-engaging your opponent helping you to top off uh for and of course you're going to have a little bit of hp recovery from pierce mark there's typically a lot of bow blades so this helps you to pull bow, bow blades out of stealth because you don't have access on this particular build to any aoe's and so this is basically fending off of the stamina counterpart to this particular build and like i said before mirage is going to be there for the damage reduction overwhelmingly this ability is there for reduced amount of damage and of course race against time and the back bar is kind of flex you can go with whatever you want i typically like a bolstering primarily for the damage reduction um I, I did get nerfed you could run either morph or you could run for example um what's it called uh from the guild from sigic order you could run temporal guard for the damage reduction it's completely up to you i like this it works good for example for group synergy you can put whatever you want and i am running a destro destro on the back bar again the reason for the destro over for example like a resto is because the destro increases single target abilities by by a percentage and so that helps increase the damage of your swallow soul basically why we went that route um and if i forgot anything in terms of the races we did that buffs are pretty standard jumping into the cp i'm just going to give you the names of the cp we went with juggernaut obviously for the once for the damage reduction after you cc break rejuvenation because it's going to benefit because of the one because of the the set that we're running two because of the nightblade passive 
you're going to gain further bonuses from the passive uh, by picking rejuvenate which is how we're able to get these high recoveries ironclad typically if you're playing solo if you're a person who likes to 1vx and you're fighting multiple opponents and if for whatever reason you get pulled out of stealth or if someone is utilizing a, uh, a pot where you can't cloak you want to have high enough resistances so that you're able to mitigate as much damage as possible which is why i went with ironclad uh bastion is of course increases the effectiveness of damage shields there's a lot of magic sorts with magic sorks which which you're typically going to come across which is going to be your burstiest magic class that you're going to be fighting against um arcane is your arcane supremacy for the extra max magicka for damage went with deadly aim which increases the damage done with single target abilities overwhelmingly everything on this build is single target um i went with the reaving blow because again everything on the on this ability is on this build is single target so kind of eking out as much healing as possible is the route that i chose to go if you don't like it you can flip it with whatever feels comfortable for you and then i went with um duelist uh duelist rebuff primarily because most of the damage that is going to come we have enough damage reduction from running mirage on the back bar and so if for whatever reason you do take a single target ability we're trying like for example rags um whatever it might be uh that's why i kind of went with this one and pretty much the green is just all flex you probably just go for like um rationer and things like um liquid efficiency and you probably grab like you know on your way to grab warm out and that basically be the gist of this particular build i really do like magic and i play um outside of um magic of dk magic and nightblade is my second especially this particular build um playing dual wield magic and nightblade extremely fun highly recommend it. it does take quite a bit a little bit of skill to get used to uh, primarily because most of your damage reduction is going to come from situational blocking and of course roll dodging into a cloak and you're going to have extreme amounts of mobility so you're able to mobilize around the battlefield one tip that I will give when fighting other characters, your most your most hardest character, or I should say class, that you're going to fight against is typically going to be um, stamina, stamina, what's it called, um, stam sorks. That's primarily because of the hurricane, or you, or if you're fighting like a warden, so that you're able to get away from them. So the easiest way to remember when you're fighting against either one of those two classes, obviously, if the warden has their ultimate. Uh, up and running you can just basically roll dodge and get out of the way and use cloak and you're going to be more than fast enough to get out of the way warden by comparison to the build that i'm talking about would be too slow to keep up with you stam stork on the other hand has access to streak and of course has the large aoe so you, basically when you're fighting against that particular class in stam stork you want to pay attention to how big the hurricane is and you only want to engage against them when they're about to rebuff so if you're you're counting i think it takes about eight seconds but by the time that it's at max level and that lasts for about four or five seconds so you'll easily get pulled out of cloak so you want to pay attention when you're fighting against a stam sork that you typically want to engage in them when they rebuff and then disengage right before the hurricane achieves max level so it gives you roughly around eight seconds or so of time to to fight and then begin thinking about disengaging if you're not about to secure the kill wait the four seconds which allows you to go to your back bar and basically dps them down from back and then go back over to your front bar and recloak and re and reposition yourself to basically re-engage and that's basically how i would fight most stam sorks especially because they have a lot of burst um and of course they can pull you out via via hurricane that's basically gonna be it feel free to, of course to like comment and to subscribe if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section and I'll check you out next time. Thanks for watching.